welcome for joining us this evening for our regular council meeting. I will read the resolution to begin the meeting. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preg, second to Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call, go ahead, Councillor Link. I, I will be voting to approve this agenda as it is uh, before us and is seen on the public website and the all night all net website. I do not approve the additions made to the agenda if they're already made to the agenda following the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thanks. 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 Any other comments? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. No addendums to the agenda for this evening. I do have opening remarks. The Arm of West St. Paul strives to be a safe and inclusive community that residents are proud to call home. Where diversity is embraced, the environment is cared for, and leadership is valued and trusted. The West St. Paul Council is committed to working as a team to provide good governance, safe and reliable infrastructure, recreational facilities and outdoor spaces that the community can enjoy in a sustainable way that values the environment and it is financially prudent. Thank you. All right, we have a number of public hearings this evening. I will read the resolution to open up the first public hearing. Be it resolved at this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Bracetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed and that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I will turn it over to you for us to discuss the background information with council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So the first application before you tonight is variance number 44 of 2021. This is to increase the maximum permitted uh, business sign area for the property at 1219 Home Road. So the current zoning, which is CH Commercial Highway, allows for business sign area to be a maximum of 32 square feet. The applicant's proposing a sign that's 64.88 square feet uh, in area that would replace the existing signage um, that's on the, uh, the property currently. So if you take a look at the context map before you now, uh, you can see the property is located on the north side of Holmes Road. Uh, the property is approximately 15 acres in size. It is developed with uh, a number of commercial buildings, which you can see on the aerial photo uh, before you now. So the applicant site plan shows these existing buildings as well as the location of the proposed sign. So it would be located on the south side of one of the existing commercial buildings facing Holmes Road. Uh, and would be set back approximately 325 feet from the property boundary uh, adjacent to Holmes Road. So the rendering the applicant has supplied showing what the, uh, the proposed sign would look like. Uh, this is obviously during the day and they've also uh, provided uh, a rendering of what uh, it would look like in the evening. The sign is LED illuminated. Um, the uh, the renderings before you now show first of all the existing signage that's going to be removed on the left uh, and the, again the proposed signage on the right. So council did approve a previous variance on this property to allow for the uh, the signage that you see on the left image. Um, that signage has a combined area of 185.82 square feet, so quite a bit more uh, than what's uh, what's being proposed under the uh, proposed signage. However, the previously approved variance was specific to the signage proposed within that application, uh, which again is, is the sign you see in the photo on the left before you now. Um, so um, uh, a new variance is required to allow for the proposed signage. Again, variances are specific to, um, to what's being uh, applied for in the application. So even though this, um, the proposed signage is quite a bit smaller than what was previously approved under that uh, previous variance, a new variance is required to allow for the proposed signage. And just another rendering uh, the applicant has provided uh, showing what the, uh, the signage would uh, would look like. Obviously it uh, contains a business name and, uh, and logo. 
And just to reiterate, all existing signage on the building and property would be removed. So this would be the only but, uh, business sign on the property. Uh, that 32 square foot maximum is a combined area for all business signage. Um, so in this case, the, uh, the combined area would just be the, the area of this sign, which is, uh, again, just over 62 uh, square feet in area. So uh, variances have been approved to increase um, the maximum combined business sign area for other commercial and industrial properties in the municipality. Uh, and as I mentioned, there was also a, a previous variance for this uh, property that approved uh, an increase to the maximum combined business sign area. Uh, ARM administration has indicated they have no comment for this application. Manitoba infrastructure has indicated that they have no concerns. Should council approve this application, our office recommends the following conditions. First, the variance is limited to an increase in the maximum permitted business sign area as proposed within this application. Any changes and or replacements may require a new variance approval. And number two, that the applicant obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to a sign permit from the Red River Planning District. And I'll just note that a permit application has been submitted uh, to our office for the sign. Uh, cannot be uh, issued until uh, and unless council approves this variance application. So that's all I have for this uh, application and as always welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payton. Mr. Payton. I will go around the virtual council table and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions for our planner? Mayor, I have no questions. Thank you. you. Councillor Bersetti, any questions for our planner? No questions, thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Payton? No questions, but just uh, a side note that you're echoing when you're talking sometimes. Thanks. <laughs> Councillor Prague, any questions for our planner? Questions. Thank you. Thank you, and no questions from me as well. Thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have the applicant online? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have uh, Sean Connolly with us this evening, registered in support. And is Mr. Yes, 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 yes. Conaway wanting to speak to council? Yeah, it, it'll just be one moment. Hi. Hi. Welcome, Mr. Connolly. Hi. Can you hear me? We can. Were you able to hear the planner's comments? Yeah. yeah. My only concern is uh, our customer is quite annoyed with the second variance for the main reason that the signage is smaller. So we don't quite understand why you have to go back for variance at 32 square feet. And once the, the variance was approved for more signage back in the day. So I'm just wondering if this could be reviewed with uh, council or Red River planning at some point. You raise a great point. Our um, zoning bylaw is under review and coming up for an update. So signage is something that council has flagged to uh, to look at so that uh, we don't see all the signage signage come to us. But okay. at this time, our zoning bylaw has uh, has conditions that um, if the ownership changes, then a new variance is required. So at this point, we're following the process, but point well taken. Okay. Well. If, if you guys do need help with this, uh, we're more than able to help you along with it as well. So any questions, we would love to help. That's great, thank you. I'm gonna go around our virtual council table here and see if there are any questions uh, from, from council for you. Councilor Bersetti, any questions for Mr. Connolly? No, thank you. Councilor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Connolly? Hi, Mr. Connolly. So your original uh, sign variance that you went for, was that was a sign for yourself, right? Uh, no, it was nope. for the, well, we, we were the applicant and we did this for the owner. Of oh, I see. 
Okay. And so it's the person that's renting has changed. Is that what happened? Well, they were bought by Terra Vida. Oh, I see. Okay. So it was Mainline Industries, and then it switched over to Terra Vida. So it just changed ownership. It didn't really change customer. No, no. Oh, okay, I can see why you're not really happy with it. <laughs> well, the cu the customer is not really happy because he's he's on to manage the company for Terra Vida. So yeah. he just didn't understand why he has to go through the variance again. And I understand what you're saying. The point is of, of there's change of ownership, but the third. No, actually I'm not making that point. What the, I guess the point that I would try to make in this instance, probably what's happened here uh, and, and the planner can probably speak to it. Probably what's happened here is that the variance is specific to a certain sign. And so when you change the, the size of the sign, it's always specific to those dimensions. So maybe we're changing, I, I haven't seen any bylaw change yet, but maybe we're changing the bylaw so that it encompasses a little bit more because every time the size of the sign changes, you would have to have a variance to capture that. Am I right on that, Mr. Payton? Yeah, Mr. so variances are specific to, um to the signs that are being applied for. So that previous variance was specific to the signage, which you see on the left of the, of the screen. Um, so even though it's less, it's a change in, in the signs that's being proposed and that's why a new variance is required. So Mr. Payton, if the sign was exactly the same size, you wouldn't have required a variance, is that correct? No, uh, it, it, in this case, it doesn't have anything to do with, with the sign size um, other than it's, it's greater than 32 square feet. Um, uh, it's it's the fact that it's a different sign altogether. So oh, okay. You apply for a variance. It's it's very specific. Um, there's a standard condition, which is, um, you know, uh, it's it's variance is limited to what's being applied for in this application. Any changes require uh, may require new variance approval. So that's what's happened here. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Conley, does that make sense? Well. It makes sense, but you're not happy, right? <laughs> well, the only issue that it is, is the 32 square foot. So you take example, like a place like Walmart or Canadian Tire in, in the city of Selkirk, right? So you're, you're telling them that they're only allowed 32 square feet of the size of the business that they do. It's, it, it's got to be changed. The, the allowable square footage for signage, like maybe 25% of the building. I'll follow the city's model. So you measure the, the, the frontage and you're allowed 25% of signage, which is a good rule of thumb. You could go less or you could go more, but 32 square feet is basically a four by eight sign. So if you, you took this Terra Vita sign and put a four by eight, you wouldn't even see it from the highway. Right. So that's, that's and you're right on the highway, so you want something very visible. Well, yes. Yeah. Good suggestion. You the, so you look at the... Are you there? Oh, I think he cut out. Oh, it's a good suggestion, though, that we go with the percentage of the size of the building. So um, thank you, Mr. Conley. I don't know where you went. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, you are. Okay, good. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good suggestion because then it takes into account the size of the building and uh, and proper proportions. Yes. So, I, yeah, I understand your frustration. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Connolly? No questions. I just want to thank the applicant for offering his assistance in the future or changing up the bylaws. Not a problem, we can help Thank out. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Connolly? No, I have no questions for Mr. Connolly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Capone, I'd like to thank you as well. We uh, actually have a meeting with um, a planner, uh, the lead planner from Red River Planning on Monday uh, to discuss our, our zoning bylaws. So that's helpful information for us. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone registered in support, opposition, or for information on this application? 
no one else registered uh, in support, in opposition, or for information. Thank you, M Mr. Connolly. If, is there anything else that you would like to add? Otherwise, uh, we will close the public hearing, discuss, and uh, and take a vote on this matter. No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Good night. I will read the resolution to close the public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded by Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. I will read the resolution. Whereas an application for variance 4421 was received for the property located at 1219 Holmes Road to increase the maximum permitted area of a business sign from required 32 square foot maximum to 64.88 square foot maximum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representation from both for and against the application. Therefore, be it resolved that after after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 4421 with the following conditions. One, the variance is limited to an increase in the maximum permitted business sign area as proposed within this application. Any changes and or replacement may require a new variance approval. And two, applicant owner obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to a sign permit from the Red River Planning District. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? I'll go around the table. Councillor Link, any comments for discussion? Any comments for discussion? No comments, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any comments for discussion? Discussion. No, thank you. Discussion. Discussion. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any comments for discussion? Just wondering, um, it's the signage bylaw that's going to be discussed on Monday with Red River Planning? We don't have a signage bylaw. It's our zoning bylaw that we're discussing with Mr. Eno. Which zoning bylaw is it? Is it just, is it just a West St. Paul zoning bylaw? Well, there's lots of bylaws in there. So is it pertaining to any one zoning area in particular or just any zoning? We can discuss that further or you can send we an can email. Oh, well, it's just because it's the first any, time. Any questions relate or comments related to this application? Well, that was my comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Bersetti, any comments? No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Hearing and seeing no further discussion, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. All right, our next public hearing, I will read the resolution to open the public hearing. Be it resolved that this meeting of council reached for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded. Councillor Prague, any discussion? Hearing is for the close in favor. Opposed, that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Payton, I will you. Thank you. So the next application before council this evening is variance number 49 of 2021. So this is um, a condition uh, of approval for subdivision number S21-2886. Uh, so that subdivision was conditionally approved by council on April 8th uh, and by the Red River Planning District Board on April 21st. One of the conditions of approval of that subdivision is that the applicant obtains all required variances. Um, so the subdivision would create four lots uh, from the existing property. All of those lots 
Um, each of the four lots is undersized for uh, what's required under the zoning, which is two acres. All four proposed lots are 1.249 acres uh, in area. Um, and so before, uh, before that subdivision can proceed and be completed, uh, council would have to approve uh, uh, these variances to allow for a reduction in, in site area. But again, these are related to uh, a subdivision that was uh, conditionally approved by council uh, and the Red River Planning District Board back in April. So 680 Willis Road uh, is the subject property. It, it is a through lot with frontage on both uh, Willis and Slater Road. So it's shown here um, prior to subdivision. So it's approximately four, uh, rather five acres in size. And I've just very roughly drawn in where the proposed lot boundaries would be. So the, uh, the proposed subdivision would, um, uh, would divide this uh, five acre property into four equally sized uh, lots intended for residential use. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the lots um, all are undersized in terms of area. They do, however, all comply with the minimum required site width in the RRO Rural Residential Zone, um, which is 124 feet. Sorry, that's the RRO Rural Residential Overlay Zone. Um, so they all uh, um, um, comply with that minimum width, uh, but need variances for, uh, for area. As, we, as I mentioned, the zoning is RRO. Uh, across uh, Slater Road to the south, uh, there is uh, another type of rural residential zoning, uh, RR, which it does have slightly different requirements. Um, so council should consider whether the proposed lot sizes are compliant with the development plan policy that states that rural residential lots should be of a size that reflects a rural character and can accommodate on-site wastewater disposal. Uh, the subject property is located within the Red River Corridor uh, designated area uh, and uh, Manitoba Conservation and Climate uh, has no concerns with the proposed use of holding tanks to, to service these, these properties. Uh, should Council approve the requested zoning variances, we recommend the following condition. Uh, one, that the variances are limited to what is being proposed in the application. Any changes will require new variance approval. Uh, and just finally, this is the uh, subdivision application map, or again, that conditionally approved subdivision that would create these lots. As you can see, uh, as I mentioned, um, the subdivision would divide this property into four equally sized lots of 1.249 acres each, which is uh, less than the minimum requirement of two acres uh, in this zone. So this is all I have for um, this application. Uh, I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planner. And we'll go around the virtual table here. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner through the chair? Uh, thank you, Mr. Payton, for your um, presentation. I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Councillor Preg, any questions for Mr. Payton? No questions. Thank you, Mr. Payton. Thank you. Councillor Bersetti, any questions for Mr. Payton? No, thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Payton? Uh, no, Madam Mayor, I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. And no questions from me as well. Very straightforward. We talked about this at the subdivision stage. So thank you. Ms. Elias, have we got the applicant on the line? Yes, Madam Mayor. I believe we have uh, Mr. Singh Ray with us this evening. Welcome. Are you able to hear us okay? Yeah, sir, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Or is there anything that you're wanting to add to this um, after hearing the planner? Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks. No questions. No questions. I'll just yeah. see if council has any questions for you. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Bersetti, any questions for the applicant? Yeah, okay. Questions, thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions for the applicant? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions? No, no questions. Thank you. And Councillor Link, any questions for the applicant? Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. 
thank you for being here this evening, Mr. <laughs> Sinway. I'm probably saying your name wrong, but thank you for being here. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're pronounced very Ms. good. Ms. Elias, have we got anyone registered in support, opposition, or for information? Yes, Madam Mayor. We also have uh, Mr. Paul Gill with us this evening. He's registered in favor. Welcome, Mr. Welcome. Abal Gill. Is there anything that you're wanting to uh, add? Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hello. You can hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am in the favor for this. Uh, if anybody has any question, I can uh, say anything. Thank you. I'm just going to ask council. Does anyone have any questions? I'm seeing shaken heads. I think we got a really good description from our planner on this. Thank you for making yourself available. No questions at this time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Miss Elias, have we got anyone else registered to speak in support opposition or for information? information, information, information. Yes, we also have Alan Kotel Miski registered in support. He noted no objection to the subdivision uh, adjacent to his property. Um, no one else in favor, but we do have Laura and John Miranda. Um, they have registered against. Um, they're not with us this evening. And no comments no. submitted, Miss Elias, in opposition from uh, the couple? Uh, just that they are opposed. Thank you. Does the applicant have anything else that they are wanting to add? Otherwise, we will close the public hearing. No, thank you. No. Okay, great, thank you. We will close the public hearing and vote on this issue. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded by Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Thank you. I will read the resolution. Whereas an application for variance 4921 was received for the property located at 680 Willis Road, which has received conditional approval for subdivision of the property into four proposed lots and in seeking to reduce and is seeking to reduce the minimum required site area from two acres to 1.249 acres minimum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against this application. Therefore, be it resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 4921 with the following conditions. One, the, these variances are limited to what is proposed within the application and any changes will require a new variance approval. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Prag. Any further discussion? I'll go around the table. Councillor Bersetti, any comments? Councillor Kleiber, Councillor Prag, and Councillor Link. Thank you. Hearing and seeing no comments, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried, thank you. We are at item 5.3. For those of you following along at home with our agendas, be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Perreg, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Thank you. Mr. Planner, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you. So 
So this application number 50 of 2021 is another variance related to a subdivision. So uh, this is a condition of approval for subdivision number S21-2883, uh, which similar to the last application was conditionally approved by council on April 8th and by the Red River Planning District Board on April 21st. Um, so the uh, um, similar again to the last application, um, the subdivision could not proceed unless and until council approves uh, the variance. In this case, it's to reduce the minimum required site width for the two proposed lots. Um, so the uh, minimum required width in the A4 agricultural zone is 198 feet. The uh, two proposed lots are each uh, 150 feet uh, in, in width. As you can see, the subject property is located uh, on the east side of uh, Blackdale Road. Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, um, uh, the uh, site uh, width uh, requires variances, but the site area of the two proposed lots uh, exceeds the minimum requirement of four acres. Uh, both the proposed lots are 4.9 acres in area, and I've just roughly drawn in where the um, where the proposed lot boundary uh, the subdivision uh, is. So as you can see, it's uh, it's just splitting uh, the existing uh, lot down down the middle. So Again, uh, each of the lots, uh, proposed lots at 4.9 acres in size exceeds the minimum requirement for area, but at 150 feet in width, they uh, require variances to uh, reduce the minimum requirement from 198 feet to the uh, proposed 150 feet. Uh, in terms of zoning, the property is zoned A4 uh, across Black Hill Road. There are rural residentially uh, zoned properties and uh, of course, a uh, agriculturally zoned uh, A80 property to the, uh, to the east. And the applicant subdivision application map again showing uh, the, uh, the um, uh, configuration of the proposed lots. Um, so it's essentially just a, a split um, uh, of the existing property uh, into equally sized lots, each with 150 feet of frontage on uh, Blackdale Road. Uh, Manitoba Conservation uh, has noted that the width of the proposed lots is not sufficient to allow for septic fields. And as such, the proposed lots will need to be serviced by holding tanks. Um, the existing septic field will need to be uh, decommissioned. Should council approve the requested zoning variances, we recommend the following condition. Uh, one, that these variances are limited to what is proposed within the application. Any changes will require a new variance approval. Uh, that's all I have for this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payton. I will go around the table. Councillor Prague, any questions for Mr. Payton? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Payton? Yes, um, Mr. Payton. I was looking in the zoning bylaw on page 53. The intent of the A4 zone, that's the intent, uh, is to accommodate rural and limited agricultural uses on smaller lots within the agricultural restricted designation of the development plan. Um, the development plan had some changes. Was this, was the intent of the A4 zone changed in the new development plan? No, so the development plan had no direct impact on zoning. Um, and uh, the, in this case, the, the designation applicable to the property didn't, didn't change. It remained uh, as agricultural restricted. Okay, and this applicant, I believe, has indicated residential use only? Uh, they've indicated that the, the, uh, the, the new, one of the proposed lots will be uh, developed with a, with a new uh, dwelling. The, there is an existing uh, dwelling on, on proposed lot one. Well, thank you for clarifying the intent of the zoning bylaw, Mr. Payton. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. Payton? No, well, thank you. And Councillor Kleiber, any questions for Mr. Payton? Mr. Payton, I'm kind of confused about the agricultural restricted uh, component of this application when it was in subdivision. Just wonder if you could clarify something for me because I have 10 acres of land that's also agriculture restricted and I've never been able to subdivide it. So is it just a matter of council deciding that you can just 
that you can subdivide? Or how does that work? Well, anyone can make a subdivision application. Uh, our office is obligated to circulate it and bring it to council for decision. Um, so in that sense, yes, anyone can uh, can apply for any any type of subdivision that they want to apply for. Okay, I think the thing that we got some letters today and the, the concerns of some of the uh, residents in the area is that this will now start a, a process of people subdividing their their land into the same kind of configuration because that whole section there, as you showed, that's all green, that would all be agriculturally restricted, correct? That's correct. <laughs> right? Yes, the, yeah. And so does the zoning normally allow for subdivision or is it supposed to stay a certain acreage size? Um, typically, um, all the, the development plan states for agricultural restricted um, lots is that the, uh, the size of lots should generally be four acres in size. So it doesn't okay. reference specifically the width or anything like that. And uh, in this case, the both proposed lots exceed that uh, minimum of four acres. Okay. But it, it doesn't say any frontage or anything. It does not. Uh, only the zoning bylaw has that uh, minimum width requirement. Of 198 feet. Uh, so again, the applicant's proposing 150 feet in this case. Okay, so that's where the variance comes in. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payton. No questions from me. Ms. Elias, uh, do we have the applicant on the line wanting to speak to this item? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have uh, Mr. Singh Ray with us again uh, in favor of this application. Welcome back, Welcome Mr. Back. Singh. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, can I ask your name to pronounce it correctly? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. 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 My name is, my name is Gagandeep Rai. Welcome. Is there anything that you're wanting to add that the planner uh, didn't cover on your application that you're wanting to share with council? No, thank you. No, any questions? Yeah. Thank you. I'll see if council has any questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions for the applicant? Um, uh, good evening. Um, are, are you intending to use the, uh, the properties um, for some agricultural restricted activities? Uh, or is it strictly residential use that you are going to put the land uh, to use as? Uh, residential is there, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Bersetti, any questions for the applicant? No questions. We've already rezoned re re this, so it's just a variance for the condition of the approval here. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any questions? No questions, Commissioner Prague. Thank you. And Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the applicant? Mr. Singh, uh, I voted against this subdivision and the reason for it was because of the holding tanks. I, um, I, I really don't like the holding tanks in this area, especially with five acres. Uh, I would prefer to see it stay as a septic field and that's um, one of the reasons I'm not in favor of this. Just uh, thought I'd let you know. Thank you. No, there is a uh, so many. There is a uh, so many another lots is uh, less than um, uh, five acres is there yeah, on a black dale is there, yeah. and there is a seven thirty six black dale is uh, two point eight acres seven forty eight seven forty eight black dale is two acre five ten black dale is three point six nine acres and uh, six or two black 
uh, Blackdale is 2.69 acres, 618, 2.47 acres, 650, 4.05 acres, and uh, 674 is uh, in a, this property is in a neighbor, is, that one is a two acre as well, and the 712 is two acre, 2.08 acres as well. And so many is another properties, is they have less than uh, some properties is a uh, two acre as well. And even 466 Blackdale, 1.86 acres is right. Yeah. Right. So anytime you have two acres and you have the proper frontage, you can keep that septic tank. And that's kind of what I like to see in that area because it's very rural. So that's my only objection to it. But thank no, you for bringing that up. No, if you uh, council allow to the sector field, then I will uh, keep a sector field as well. Yeah, but we can't because there's, there's certain environmental standards that we have to follow. But I just wanted you to know that because you're in my ward. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to council. Uh, I don't have any questions for you, uh, but I would like to thank you. And, uh, and you've clearly done your homework in terms of uh, surrounding properties and being compatible with the area. So I do want to commend you for doing some research to see that your uh, request for subdivision and variance is consistent with other properties on Blackdale. So thank you for that. Thank you. Councillor Link, go ahead. Uh, Madam Mayor, may I ask the applicant one more question? Sure. sure. Yes, um, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You, you checked out the acreages. Did you check out the frontages? Uh, are, are the properties that you mentioned, are, do they have frontages that allows for a septic field, which is 198 feet? No, but or, some, yes, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You, some properties are less than uh, 1.98 uh, uh, 198 uh, feet as well as there are some properties less than that. On same street is there. So. Can Mr. Planner, can you confirm that? Mr. Pates. Yes, so uh, there are uh, several properties on, on the east side of Blackdale Road under the same zoning um, that are uh, 180 feet in width. Um, so that's less than obviously the 198 feet, but uh, greater than what's being proposed in this application. Thank you, Mr. Planner. Well, I want to thank the applicant again for joining us. We'll see if there is anyone registered in support, opposition, or for information, and then you'll have another opportunity to, uh, to speak if there's anything else you'd like to add. Ms. Elias, have we got anybody else registered? Yes, Madam Mayor, we also have Iqbal Gill registered in support for this application as well. Welcome back, Mr. Gill. Is there anything that you are wanting to add? Hello, good evening again. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, yes, uh, I recorded as in the favor for this property. If you have anybody has any questions, I can say that. Thank you. Any questions you. from Any council? Questions just from council? Seeing shaking heads. No questions for you at this time. Thank you, Mr. Gill, for uh, registering and support. I really appreciate it for every single one on the council, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Elias, have we got anyone else registered in support, opposition, or for information? We also have a... Um, and render man registered in support. He's not with us. And anyone registered in opposition? In opposition, we have Eldon um, and April Cron registered against, and they're with us this evening. Mr. and Mrs. Cron, are you able to hear us okay? Yeah. Yes, we are. 
Can you hear us? Thank you. I uh, will open uh, the floor well, to you if you're wanting. We've read your email that you submitted to council. Is there anything else that you're wanting to add uh, in opposition of this application? Yeah, I think we have quite a few points that we just want to reiterate. So uh, we've been here 20 years. So we originally came to Blackdale um, and built a Cape Cod home. And like many things, once you start something, people kind of look at that and they start to build infrastructure around you. So there's 15 properties on Blackdale Road that have the same depth of property. And of those 15, the difference between that um, frontage is 200 to 300. So to minimize that 25% smaller to 150 changes everything because you're talking about um, the size of uh, uh, changing it more to a city environment and because we talked about moving here and then and then growth started and built it and built houses around us then we're worried too that that will just continue to perpetuate down the way because that's 15 properties now you're talking about for looking at ways to then further subdivide and I can appreciate the other person talked about um, other lots with holding tanks but we live on this road and um, by and large most of those are uh, uh, zoned as a4 we have a neighbor across the road that has a holding tank. And so that would mean beside us would be two people and across from us would be another person. That's a lot. At the same time, we chose this property because of the privacy and the proximity to neighbors. If we wanted two acres and we wanted to be right on top of each other, we'd be across the road or in one of the new subdivisions in West St. Paul. So what you're saying is, just subdividing it to 150 isn't just it's a huge change for us would be the only house and 15 properties that would be so close together that also impacts titles because we were reading a little bit about accessory buildings so if there's two titles that means more accessory buildings in and around us we have a dairy farm colony seven oaks learning service center horse stables and we're on the road to old Hammock marsh so that's a lifestyle that's a rural piece and that's something to, to really think about when you talk about what this um, would be used for next door is residential. So agriculture means to us that the neighbor uses our back area for straw and bales it like that's that's how it is around here. The other piece I think that's important is um, in some of the recent purchases in and around our area, a lot of properties have done a lot of commercial um, dwelling and so we don't have any idea what the implications are long term for for the neighbors. There's also impact on the watershed. Trichloroethylene, trichloroethylene. Um, I'm doing all the talking because because I, it's it's upsetting to me. Actually, it's very upsetting to me. And what I laugh about is my husband Eldon uh, has been on the fire department for many years. How many years now, dear? 16 years. 16. And the back property, um, you know, has been on fire quite a few times. <laughs> and he saved the neighbor's house. <laughs> Couldn't save the one's shed, but saved the neighbor's house. And we looked after the neighbor's property, actually, that was just purchased. Um, when she lost her husband, we mowed their front. And so we, you know, we, yeah. Anyways, is there anything to say to you? You wrote the letter I'm talking. Yeah, well, one other thing I wanted to mention is every neighbor that I went around and asked if uh, what they thought about this uh, subdivision, making it the most narrow piece of property in the neighborhood, um, there wasn't one that was for it. So everybody was uh, against it and uh, uh, they want to be able to keep this, um, this area uh, as a you know kind of the, the lifestyle that uh, we want to be able to be close to our neighbors but yet have that space and we didn't want to have it as like a city lot so that's why we wanted to have that open space and it is zoned it, you know agriculture so that four acres so you know we're we're passionate we're nervous we're not opposed to having neighbors in fact we really cared a lot for our neighbors and, and did everything we could um, to support her yeah, is that it? Yeah. Yes, that should be it. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. I, I want to thank you both for coming to speak to council. I know it can be nerve wracking and we definitely appreciate you being here to share your concerns. And uh, it's much easier to hear from you both and have you come and speak to us than, um, than just an email. So um, to hear your passion, we're really very grateful that you've come to council to share your concerns. Thank you for that. I'm going to go thank around you. our virtual council table here and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Bassetti, any questions for Mr. and Mrs. Cron? Just, uh, thanks for coming and putting, you know, your thoughts into there. Like, I, I'm sure it, you know, re was really getting to you. So saying some of the stuff just probably clarified it to some of us too. But were you also surprised to hear the planner say that there is other lots? Sorry, I didn't write the number of them down that he was saying that are under that 198 in your area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't realize that there was a one at 180, but I do believe that is closer to the other end of Blackdale, which is uh, so close to about two miles away. Um, but yet in the area that we are at with all the properties, the smallest is 198. And like he mentioned, uh, 150, uh, like that is 25% smaller than the 198 that they're calling for. So even still at 150 feet, that's a small, narrow property. Yeah, and we did do some homework. We went to see where all of yours were and the distance between your neighbor to do a comparative. Um, I hope that doesn't sound creepy, but we wanted to say like, um, you know, so for some of you, your neighbors are um, 100 feet um, away. And so for us, it goes from 300 to um, half of that so we're just imagining if 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 that were the story for you you know to go from a, a hundred or 150 to, to 50. um because we always think the best example is when it's close to you and you have that understanding because i don't know if anyone's ever been you know right, right exactly where we are that's all i gotta say thank you for your comments okay thanks Thank you, Councillor Bersetti. Councillor Prague, any any questions, comments? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions, comments? No, I don't have any questions. Um, I, I'm, I'm perhaps um, focusing on the intent of the A4 zone as to accommodate rural and limited agricultural uses. Um, that is the zoning. The zoning was not changed, I don't believe. Uh, uh, when the subdivision was made, the subdivision was okayed, but I don't believe it involved a zoning change, did it, Mr. Planner? It did not. The zoning has been, uh, did not change for May 4. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Kleiber? Yeah, I think the, the thing that we're missing here is that it's a long, narrow lot. So even though it maintains five acres, all of that is in the back and then the two houses are in the front. So now you, instead of having one family on that property, you're having two families on the same property. And I think that's, um, and I think that's a concern. Um, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Cron, have you any concerns about noise or anything like that? Well, we know that uh, with um, the current um, septic issue that they have, uh, they're going to have to decommission that field and put in two holding tanks. And uh, the pumper trucks definitely are not quiet. And uh, they do uh, submit uh, or emit uh, quite the odor when they do get pumped out. And depending on how many people end up moving into to those places, they're going to need to be pumped out several times a month. So. Um, that's the, those are some of the issues there and then also how close um we're going to have uh, a building next to ours of course uh, there's going to be a, a, a building right next to our area and that's going to definitely increase the the noise there the second uh, second family yeah for sure. what would the proximity be to um i know you have a garage out front there what is how close is that property to your, say, garage, your your area there? Your uh, home? Like, what is the garage to our property line? No. Yeah, like, how close is it? The, oh, the garage to, to 
to our to property, their property line. line. Yeah. Um, what is it about? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about 20 feet. 20 I actually feet. haven't measured it recently, but uh, pretty close. About, 20 feet. Yeah, it'd be about 20 feet. And then your house is even closer. Like it's a little bit, you got a little bit more leeway there, but so yeah. if somebody building right out front, uh, that would be pretty close to you then, would it not? Definitely, definitely yeah. would be. I think the builders were already out there. Yeah, with the families and yeah, we didn't know what was happening. <laughs> Yeah, there's lots, well, lots of kids the, running around. It <laughs> seems to be the problem is that the home, homes are right out front along with your home. So it, there's, it's very close together, it seems to me. Just doing yeah, it right. I can't imagine anybody building the, in the back half of that property, which we wouldn't see them then. But the problem, again, is with having somebody so close, we want to have some sort of division between our yards. And trees is what we would normally love to have but of course the trees don't grow in this neighborhood <laughs> so we planted so many trees it's ridiculous uh, so like a fence would probably have to be put up so of course now there's more cost to us because of that okay do you have any other concerns i feel like we've been talking too much but um yeah no go ahead um yeah i guess uh, i'm not sure if we mentioned uh you know right now it is the, that part of the lot um has got some lovely wild grass uh so that we got some great green space there's wildlife in there all the time and um the with having it split up there's uh, like i think my wife mentioned it already with uh, two homes two garages possibly sheds other extra outbuildings there's going to be uh, so much more taken away from uh, the current wildlife it's two titles is entitled to six outbuildings yeah, and the out the, the outbuildings would then be on the back of the property which would be closer to your home is that correct yeah well yeah and that's the thing we don't even know uh, what the setbacks would be um, um, there has been uh, no information in regards to what type, uh, what size, what kind of home or buildings are going to be uh, in that area. And um, if it's uh, anything like some of the new homes that are in the, the new development off of uh, perimeter, uh, like there's some, there's some big homes there. So that's going to cast a shadow on uh, my existing dream home that I, I, you know, that we've been here for years and raised our family with. So yeah, it's, I guess, just a little bit frustrating. Sorry. <laughs> no, I understand. Thank you very much for your comments. Appreciate that. Thank you for the chance. Thank you. Councillor Bersetti, you have your hand up. Go ahead. I wanted to make a comment. You were saying about your, your garage 20 feet from the property line. Even if this property wasn't subdivided or if it did fit into that, you know, the criteria without the variance, there would still be that property built there with the same conditions that, um, you know, they'd have to meet with the setbacks, the side yard setbacks, all that kind of stuff. Or even if this property was never split up, the person could tear that house down and build an existing home. Like, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what this area is for side yard, but so either way that could, could change even if this wasn't subdivided. I hope you, I hope I got myself clear there, but. I kind of oh, sure, confused myself. Sure. There. That makes perfect sense, and that's that's true. Um, but I think the bigger impact, though, is that you're talking about double double bodies, double families, double interest, um, and uh, increased population, increased driveway, increased noise, increased uh, less privacy. But I do hear what you're saying. We're not opposed to having neighbors, as we said. That's why we're here, and that's why Eldon is a volunteer firefighter. You know, like we care. You know. No, I understand. I just wanted to clarify, like if it wasn't, oh, sure. I just wanted to bring that up there. I can understand your other points too. Thank yeah. you. There was another building there, but it burnt down. Um, yeah, no problem with other buildings. I think I'd just like to follow up with the planner on those comments in terms of setback and side yard was brought up. And maybe Mr. Payton, you could share with council and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cron what the setback and side yards are for this area. 
Certainly. So in this zone, a, a main building like a dwelling would have to be 25 feet, a minimum of 25 feet from the side property boundary. Um, and an accessory building like a garage or shed would have to be a minimum of 10 feet from the side boundary. Mm -hmm. So um, regardless of whether the property is subdivided or not, uh, a house could be a, uh, would have to be a minimum of 25 feet away from that side boundary and a, a garage of 10 feet. Thank you. So we're, if, if it's the garage on that side of their property, then it's uh, the closest they could have is 35 feet away from their building to the next building. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what their, their uh, building is set back, but again, the minimum for a garage uh, is 10 feet. Um, minimum for a house is 25 feet. And Mr. Planner, can I get you to bring up the, the pictures again? Because I know they're really concerned about the width of the frontages of yards and where that took place. And you had mentioned that there's other properties on the street. And just to clarify what that looks like, and they, they've raised some good points about what's going on in the neighborhood here. Yeah, so this would be the best view of it. If you can see my uh, um, my cursor on the screen here, um, this is the, uh, the two properties here that have 180 feet uh, in width. Um, I'm not sure if council is able to able to see that. Um, perhaps I, I'll. Uh, uh, might be a little easier to uh, okay. to see. So this is the the property here, 70, uh, 725. Um, so that's the subject property that uh, that the variances are for. Um, the the properties that with 180 feet of frontage that I mentioned earlier, that's 825 and 835. Uh, here, so the, the rest of the properties on the street um, uh, typically on the east side of Blackdale Road have about 300 feet of frontage. And then I, I had a follow up question in terms of the agriculture use. I know it's been brought up a couple of times that this is A4 and that this is um, strictly for agriculture. That obviously permits residential homes in the A4. Do we have any idea of how many are, are using this for agriculture related? Uh, purposes that have farms? I, I don't have uh, any stats on that. Miss Elias of CRM, and do we have any information on how many of these are, are truly using these for agricultural farming purposes? We wouldn't have records uh, regarding that either. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Uh, there are horses down the road. Uh, I think that one of these properties is um, just slightly down from here. I think two or three, I think maybe 855, but I'm not gonna quote it, has horses beyond that. The next one has goats. The next one has chickens. So there's all kinds of agricultural activity on this street. And then directly across from there at the very end of Blackdale is the big, um, a dairy farm as well. Um, I think we have to note, like when we say there, there's uh, septic holding tanks across the street, if you take a look at those lots right there, they're right across the street, they're pretty small lots. And that's probably why those ones have septic holding tanks while these ones are the larger ones. One of my concerns here is if, um, Mr. Payton, can you, can you um, zoom in again on the two properties, Mr. Kranz and then the, other one? Yeah, yeah, okay. So 725 and then 749, is that? Something a hard time seeing. If you look at the, if you look at the two houses there, now uh, it's been suggested that we, that the person could put the garage on the side where Mr. Cron is. I don't think that would happen because they wanna do a shared driveway. So they're gonna have the house closer to Mr. Cron and they're gonna have the, the garage closer to the existing driveway there. So uh, that's, they're gonna be up in that area very close to Mr. Cron with the, uh, side, uh, the, the driveway being shared. Now, one of my concerns here is what Mr. Cron had mentioned about accessory buildings. We actually have no control over where anybody puts an accessory building, right? Is that, am I correct on that, Mr. Pat, Mr. Payton? 
No, the zoning bylaw does have uh, um, things like minimum setback requirements from property lines that does determine. It's a setback requirement, but you could build a house very close to the front and you could put an accessory building right behind it or one or two or three, right? There's a setback. You need to be 10 feet away from, from the house. Um, yeah. 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 That That's a, again a, a concern right there for me because here, Mr. Cron has been there a long time. He's established himself. And now it's sort of like we're imposing something on him rather than um, something that he's, you know, bought out there and been out there for years. I also note that the house is on the other side away from Mr. Cron. And that's why I think that he has concerns now about a house right on top of him. So I just like council to consider that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. I have no further questions. Mr. and Mrs. Cron, I wanna thank you again, both of you for uh, coming and speaking with council tonight. We very much appreciate that. Thank you very much for allowing us to speak. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Elias, do we have anyone else registered in opposition or for information? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Kathy Bacandro registered against. She provided comments that she objects to this happening because the community is not meant to be subdivided into small pieces of land. Uh, she also notes that she moved to West St. Paul to have space and feels that if she doesn't object to this happening, it could, could continue to happen to many of her neighbors. Additionally, we have Vanessa Bruno, CJ Philipchuk, Melody Chateauneuf, and Katrina Senek and Ian Hodgkinson registered against. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Um, I'm going to ask the applicant after hearing uh, the objections and some of the concerns raised by uh, the neighboring property there, um, is there any further comments that you would like to add? I go, go, go ahead, Mr. Singh, if there's anything further that you'd like to add, um, having heard the comments of the neighbors there and some of the concerns that they raised, you have an opportunity to uh, to address those with council now. Yes, uh, actually I'm raised in the West St. Paul as well. And, uh, you know, I'm a family man, Israya. I take care of my neighbors, Israya. And uh, but as right now, requirement is a 25 foot setback, a 25 foot side yard. I leave it a more than 30 feet side yard. If my neighbors is a concern for the side yard, Israya, I have a you know is and the same thing is uh, setback to what setback is my neighbor wants. I will do that uh, setback to. And uh, side yard is more than 30 feet, is the 25 feet set, uh, side yard is requirement, but I leave it more than 30 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. And uh, we are, I'm going to make it for my own houses and my brother is like, yeah, and we are living uh, here. Is for, I like it that neighborhood as well. Yeah. Thank you. I'll see if there are additional questions from council for you. Councillor Kleiber, any additional questions? Okay. Councillor Prag, any additional questions? Questions. Councillor Link, any, any questions? No, no, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor Bersetti. Oh, no, thank you. And uh, no questions from me. Uh, a follow-up question with the planner, though. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to bring your map up again. Councillor Kleiber had, had um, made a comment about the housing uh, across the street and the depth of the lots there being much smaller. And in contemplating this and what's consistent with the area, I was just wondering if you were able to provide information to council about the depth of the lots across the street. I can do some uh, quick measurements here. I do want to point out that the lots across the street are in a different zone. The, um, they're in a rural residential zone. But uh, that being said, I'll just take a quick measurement. 
uh, here for depth. So 422 feet uh, approximately. Uh, looks like most most of the uh, these rural residential lots here on the, on the west side of Black Hill Road. And and that one is the rural residential overlay, on that. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So then a further question council had asked about um, the widths of the lots along um, Blackdale, this 150 foot frontage, that would be the smallest. Is that correct? You had mentioned the 180 on the other side there. Um, there are no lots that are smaller than 180 right now on Blackdale? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any additional comments, questions? Then I will read the resolution to close. Oh, go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. Mr. Cron mentioned uh, fencing. Uh, could we put some condition in for fencing? Mr. Planner, is that something that we're able to add to a development agreement? Certainly, yes. And I was, I was going to say, if the governor wanted to add to the development agreement, in the development agreement, I believe a development agreement is being required as part of the subdivision. Um, so it would just be a matter of, of, uh, of incorporating whatever conditions you have for this uh, application into that development agreement that's already being required. So would we put that as a condition, Mr. Payton? You certainly could, yes. Okay. I, I would like to request that uh, fence be put up um, to buffer between the two properties if possible so that Mr. Cron is not having to pay for that fencing. I don't know how far back it would go, but um, as, as far back as the accessory buildings that he would be putting up. So if he puts accessory buildings at that fence, it would extend to those accessory buildings just to buffer. I don't expect him to go all the way back five, five acres. I'm going to read the resolution to close the public hearing and then we can discuss uh, the resolution and the added condition for fencing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor Bersetti, seconded. Councillor Prague, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Oppose that is carried and I will read the resolution on the item. Whereas an application for variance 5021 was received for the property located at 725 Blackdale Road to reduce the minimum required site width from 198 feet minimum to 150 feet minimum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 5021 with the following conditions. One, that the, these variances are limited to what is proposed within the application. Any changes will require new variance approval. Mr. Planner, have you got wording on a condition two for us? Yes, so condition two would be that the applicant slash owner enter into a development agreement to address the following, but not limited to. Uh, fencing to be constructed along the northern property boundary of proposed lot two uh, to the satisfaction of the CAO. Thank you. Thank you. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Kleiber, seconded Councillor Bersetti. We'll a recorded vote too, please. Request for a recorded vote from Councillor Bersetti. I'll go around the table quickly. Any additional comments, Councillor Bersetti? Okay, Councillor Kleiber, any additional comments? Yeah, Mr. Peaton, could you read that condition about the fencing one more time? I didn't quite catch it all. Certainly. Number two, that the applicant slash owner enter into a development agreement to address the following, but not limited to 
fencing to be constructed along the northern property boundary of proposed lot two to the satisfaction of the CAO. Hmm. Um, that development can, agreement would come back to council for approval. Okay, so um, as far as the length of it, could we then have input into the length of that fence? I'm not saying council that it's going to be development uh, agreements. All right, so it, this is definitely coming back to council then. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments, Councillor Link? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any additional comments? Thank you. And no additional comments from me as well. We have a request for a recorded vote. Uh, hearing and seeing no further comments, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is defeated. All right, we are down to item 5.4.3. We have second reading of the Middle Church Secondary Plan Bylaw Plan Amendment. Mr. Planner, I will turn it to you to uh, summarize for council before I read the resolution. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not on the right item, am I? Just a minute here. Secondary Plan Bylaw Amendment 2019-14. And sorry, I'm going to read the resolution to open the public hearing. Sorry, my mistake. I would jumped ahead with the group. <laughs> Be it resolved that the meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 741 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Bersetti seconded. Councillor Kleiber, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Thank you. Get back on track here, Mr. Planner, go ahead. Thank you. So as you mentioned, this is uh, Middle Church Secondary Plan Amendment Bylaw number 2019-14. So this is a public hearing. It was adjourned uh, from the previous public hearing uh, that uh, took place on March 12th of last year. Um, the reason it was adjourned as per the resol council's resolution was to allow for further public engagement. Um, the applicant has now requested that, uh, that this application be put, uh, proceed and, and uh, come back to council, which is why it is before council uh, this evening. So um, this is at 655 and 673 Capitalist Drive and the application is to redesignate the subject properties from highway commercial policy area, that's the current designation, to an emerging residential neighborhood policy area. Uh, with the uh, with the intent of uh, rezoning the properties for residential uh, development. So there is a related zoning bylaw amendment application, which um, was given first reading by council uh, again last year in early 2020. Um, that uh, rezoning application is not proceeding uh, at this time. It is on a hold, uh, but the, uh, the proposed zone was an RMF2 multifamily residential uh, zone. As per the, the latest letter of intent submitted by the applicant, um, their intent is to construct townhomes uh, on these properties. So um, just at the outset, I want, I want to state clearly that in order for these properties to be developed with residential uses as is being proposed, this is one of two steps that needs to take place. First, this application, the, the secondary plan amendment, uh, the next um, application that would be required the council would have to approve would be the rezoning uh, application to allow for uh, uh, for residential uses. So again, this uh, uh, this property uh, applies to two lots on the north side of, uh, of Capitalist Drive. Each of the properties is approximately two and a half acres in area for a total combined area of uh, approximately five acres. Uh, as you can see, the uh, uh, the properties are bounded by the Sonova Center to the east, that's to the right of the screen, and a new public road, Middle Church Gate, um, immediately to the west. Um, this application was circulated to government agencies, most noted no concerns. Uh, Manitoba Conservation and, uh, and Climate, as well as Community Planning, both noted that the adjacent properties will remain designated for commercial use uh, and recommend considering uh, potential conflict between residential uses and neighboring highway commercial uses. Again, I just want to point out, um, so this is the current uh, designation, uh, secondary plan designations uh, on, the, on the subject properties as well as the surrounding properties. Um, so 
there are um, um, highway commercial uh, designated properties, both to the west and east. But again, to the west, uh, there's a public road that's directly adjacent. Uh, and to the east is actually property that's owned by the RM. So it's under RM control. Uh, what that means is that uh, although um, it's adjacent to a highway commercial uh, designated and zoned properties, uh, it's certainly possible that there are no commercial uses that are developed directly adjacent to the subject lots. Again, that's because to the west, there's a public road. Uh, to the east, it's RM um, controlled uh, and owned property um, that fronts on Capitalist Drive. Um, the city of Winnipeg also provided comments related to wastewater treatment that are, have been included in council's report. Um, that's their, their standard comments, uh, which they've, uh, they've been submitting for these types of applications. Um, as we've heard um, from the last uh, several planning applications that proposed um, new residential development, the RM has no concerns uh, with wastewater capacity. So I just wanted to mention that because the city of Winnipeg's comments uh, did uh, um, did address uh, some some concerns with uh, with wastewater treatment. And before you now, just the current zoning on the property. So I just wanted to mention again that um, if council approves the secondary plan amendment, um, they will still need to approve a, a rezoning uh, before residential development, for, uh, for example, townhomes, uh, as the applicant's proposing, is, is permitted on these properties. So this is the first of several steps that would need to take place. Um, and uh, uh, you know. As, as Manitoba Conservation and Climate and Community Planning um, uh, stated, the um, council should consider uh, potential conflicts with neighboring uses that um, those issues uh, of buffering and, and, and ensuring compatibility with neighboring uses, uh, they can be addressed at the rezoning stage through uh, conditions of approval, for example, requiring uh, the applicant enter into a development agreement. Um, so uh, just again, wanna make very clear that this is one of several steps uh, several approvals that would be required from council uh, before residential uh, uses are permitted on this property. Uh, there were also several comments um, that our office received that were not included in the report, both uh, indicated no concerns, but I did want to bring them up at the hearing um, tonight. So East Interlake Watershed District, as well as the land branch of the Department of Agricultural and Resource Development, uh, both of those agencies had no concerns with, uh, with the application. Um, the emerging residential neighborhood policy area that's being proposed is intended to guide the development of new neighborhoods and can include uh, single family residential, community services and parks, as well as multifamily residential and neighborhood commercial where appropriate. Um, these properties are designated as settlement center in the development plan, which is the, um, the uh, in the planning hierarchy is, is the, the plan above the secondary plan. So any secondary plan amendment needs to be consistent with the development plan designation. Um, the development plan designation is settlement center, which allows uh, for a range of housing options and forms. And so the proposed amendment is consistent uh, with uh, the, uh, the development plan. In terms of the secondary plan, um, the Middle Church secondary plan, it does um, list criteria uh, that uh, the council needs to consider when considering a, uh, a site specific secondary plan amendment such as this. So there are three uh, different criteria and I'll read them now. So criteria A, conversion is required to maintain a five-year supply of buildable residential, mixed use, commercial center and highway commercial lands and marketplace choice within the designated middle church set settlement center. Criteria B, required to ensure the balance and sustainable growth of the middle church settlement center. And finally, criterion uh, C, represents a logical expansion to and can be integrated with the Middle Church neighborhood development strategies and infrastructure services. So the Red River Planning District did have a report uh, prepared um, as part of the uh, new development plan um, process. Um, that that uh, report used data up to July 2017, so it was about four years uh, out of the date at this point. Uh, but I did want to bring it up because it did indicate that the RMA is in an advantageous position to accommodate future demand for both residential uh, as well as service commercial sites. Um, the report recommended a strong focus should be placed on employment land development uh, in this uh, particular municipality as well as accommodating new multifamily residential. So that to say um, that it appears that, uh, that both 
uh, as of four years ago, or in any case, both uh, both multifamily residential as well as ser service commercial sites are, uh, are in demand in the area. Uh, in terms of the uh, third criterion, that was uh, uh, represents a logical expansion to and can be integrated with the Middle Church neighborhood development strategies and infrastructure services. Um, this amendment would not conflict with any of the policies in place for the Grassmere Creek neighborhood development strategy. So there's no concerns from our office in terms of the, uh, the third criteria there. As a result, uh, the Red River Planning District recommends this application could be approved, provided that council is satisfied the amendment meets the aforementioned criteria uh, for the timing of a site-specific secondary plan amendment. Essentially, what this comes down to is council must determine whether this land is more appropriate for the uh, residential use that's proposed or uh, the commercial use for which it's currently uh, planned. So that's all I have for this application, uh, Madam Mayor, um, and uh, welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I'll go around the virtual council table here again. Councillor Preg, any questions, comments for the planner? Um, mostly comments like residential zone by other residential zones will be much better than having commercial put there. And I tend to agree with that. And we could have a messy commercial in front with good beautiful houses on the on the back of it. And I don't think that speaks very highly. Plus we have a church is going to be across to the west. So I think going um, residential is a good thing here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Preg. Councillor Link, any questions, comments for the planner? Uh, yes, I, I would just like to um, get some confirmation from Mr. Payton. Um, Stevenson Advisors, um, you mentioned their reports about four years old. They recommended a slow, I think they recommended a slow introduction of new multifamily land regulations and areas to meet, quote, untapped rental market demand, end of quote. So we have to sort of decide um, by, the, by the sounds of the Stevenson report about what's more um, appropriate, a rental market or um, the same report, I believe, said that we, the RM should plan for, for 10 acres of uh, new employment land every year for a game. This, if this zoning change went ahead, we would be losing five acres of commercial land. So it's a toss up. Sorry. Seems like it's a toss up between wanting untapped rental market demand or keeping five acres of commercial land. And we have commercial land all down capitalists and behind that commercial that land are residential RS zoned areas that will be developed with homes. So I don't see the difference this keeping it commercial, there would still be homes behind it. I, I don't see that that makes a difference. Um, Mr. Planner, could you confirm the Stevenson report? Yeah, what, what you stated, I, I think, is accurate from my recollection of the report as well. It's it, it basically um, laid out that, that there's demand for both these uses in the RM. So it comes down again to whether council uh, thinks that uh, what's more appropriate for this specific site. Thank you, Mr. Planner. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Bissetti, any comments, any questions comments? for the planner? Uh, 
Well, that's some comments on some questions. So just for clarification, across from Middle Church Gate on the west side, that's the church prop. Am I correct? Mr. The Planner? church site is um, on the screen before you now is, is the area that's uh, designated mixed use neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I see. Uh, yeah. Just the way the map is, it's cut off on my screen here. Okay. Now that middle church gate is going to be quite a highly high traffic area. And with us having Sonova center and our fields and everything in there and some you know, possibly a soccer team or something coming up to the east of us. I, I think it makes more sense to have it as a residential area because we, look at what we've been dealing with for the last several months through council for every business that's been coming along capitalist, sea cans, exterior storage, that kind of stuff. This is a highly visible, at least from three sides and then backing onto the homes on, we're at Crescent. So to, to see commercial come up there with the stuff that's been coming into that, I don't think it would fit into that area. And because it, you know, it's a high, it's not a gated area, but it's a one way in there that will have a lot of traffic. So I think going into a residential, residential, I guess that's what we're gonna call it in this application for now, but uh, would make more sense. And I, I don't think I'd wanna see that from our Sonova or the fields that we have to the east of that, you know, commercial along there with, like I said, sea cans, exterior storage. We, we've set precedents on there. So to have people come in and ask for that there, how are you gonna say no when it's already there? That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bussetti. Councillor Kleiber, any questions, uh, comments for the planner? Mr. Planner, in the original first reading, I did not see the RMF2 designation and I just went back and had a look and there was nothing there. So this has now been added by the applicant on the second reading? That that's the intent now, the RMF2? I know there was multifamily originally, but now it's RMF2. So that hasn't changed. Um, what happened is last year, back in 2019, actually late 2019, the applicant submitted two applications. This one uh, for the secondary plan designation, as well as a rezoning application. Um, and from the outset, that rezoning was to be uh, RMF2, um, which is a multifamily residential zone, which allows for uh, apartment buildings, uh, townhomes, single family homes, a wide range of, of residential uses. Okay, it's, not, it's not noted in the first reading though. It just um, said multifamily, but it doesn't say RMF2. Yeah, it would have been uh, uh, noted in the in the um, the rezoning application report, um, perhaps not in the first reading for the secondary plan amendment. Um, okay. Like I said, there's two separate applications. This one, uh, the applicant has, has indicated their desire to proceed with at this time. The rezoning um, application is on hold. Um, and so it's it's possible that they change the the proposed uh, zoning designation, but but what's before council tonight is simply the uh, the secondary plan redesignation. Okay, so we're not locked into RMF two. They still have to rezone, right? Yes, uh, that's correct. So so if council doesn't want RMF two, then that can be addressed at the rezoning stage. Okay, thank you. Um, I. I I have driven past this property and I'll just say this to council, I've driven past this property and my husband comment was, I hope you're not putting commercial there. And I said, yeah, well, <laughs> originally I think we were thinking that as a council, but as it has developed, it makes sense that it does probably go residential. My concern with this property is this, I do not want to see RMF2 because that is such a big um, expanse. I mean, you can go multiple levels, you can go, uh, you can put an apartment block there, you can, uh, you know, you can do quite a number of things with the RMF2 designation, which I really struggle with right there. Um, I would rather see uh, something else, maybe or some multifamily in the front and then some residential behind, uh, some single family dwellings behind. So my concern is the RMF2 designation that's in this application. 
and I, I have serious concerns about that. RMF1, I believe, would still allow multifamily dwellings, but would would circumvent any like apartment block type things. Is that correct, um, Mr. Planner? We could still have duplexes and townhomes on RMF1, but uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be um, subjected to a, a multi uh, level, right? Up to 45 feet. You're, you're correct about what those zoning designations allow for. Um, I do want to re reiterate though that this application would not be to rezone the property. So that would be a separate application. That would yeah, to but the intention is there and that's, that's why I'm speaking to the intention. Um, and then the other, I guess the other concern I have and I'll express to council is this is right on the perimeter. So um, I don't know how do we see that and we can have that discussion later, but I'll throw it out there right now. If you had multifamily coming up against the perimeter, I guess my question to you is, would you want to live there <laughs> with the noise level? And I mean, I live on Grassmere Road and I've got all the cars and trucks and buses coming by and it's noisy. So if you, we, we would put some kind of residential there, I think that um, it might be very noisy for those people. We don't have any residential right up against the perimeter there. So other than across the street, and I think we were buffering with the fence across the street. So that's one of my concerns I'm gonna throw out there. Um, I guess the um, councillor um, Link brought up the less commercial sites, that's true. If we look at existing, is it in keeping with existing? Existing is commercial. Uh, I guess my concern here, it really is, if you're gonna put residences in there, um, there's a noise factor and I know we tend to put these RMFs where there's, you know, issues. So, I mean, the last RMF, you know, it's up against the industrial, this RMF would be up against the highway and it's sort of like, well, if you're RMF, you're going to get, <laughs> you're not going to get the prime property. So, um, the front part of the property concerns me. Um, and I would like to see the RMF1 versus the RMF2. I was sp speaking, we, we have over a thousand units um, that are supposed to be coming up for uh, multifamily in our community and possibly more now with certain applications coming forward. So I have real concerns about all of the multifamily that we keep approving. Uh, speaking with the real estate agent this week, and said to me, why do you have so much multifamily in West St. Paul? People are coming in and buying the multifamily, but are renting them out. And so I think we have to keep that in mind as, um, as a council as well. So those are my comments for now. And I guess we'll discuss more as council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I made a note um, back in March 12, 20, that the public hearing was adjourned to allow further public engagement. Has further public engagement about this change, uh, proposed change, taken place? I'm not aware of any. Perhaps there has been, and I'm just not aware. Uh, that would be a question uh, for, for the applicant. I'm not aware of, uh, of any either. Okay, I'll uh, wait for the applicant then. Thank you, Councillor Link. Um, Mr. Payton, if I could get you to pull up the map again, I'm sorry. Is there any map that is is farther back away than that, or that's the that's the best we've got? That helps. A, that helps a bit. I just wanted to clarify because I know when it's zoomed in, it's it's hard for residents, hard for us to see um, that the zoned properties on either side of it, to the east and to the west, are zoned commercial but that's not what's going on. And it's very unlikely that that's what's gonna appear there. 
So in wrapping my head around what's consistent with the area to the east, that piece is owned by the RM of West St. Paul and it's zoned commercial, but it's a wide open field that might become a soccer field or is used for parking on Canada Day. So we know for a fact no commercial uses are going in there because we own it, right? And then there's the road. And then there's two lots on the other side that on the zoomed in map show that they're zoned commercial. But I just wanted to confirm that that is owned by Gateway Church. And so it's unlikely to be commercial use as well because that's all part of the church property. Is that correct? Um, let me just take, take a look. I, I'm not sure uh, about ownership. I know one of those properties that you, uh, you referenced is owned by, uh, by, the, by that uh, group, uh, but I'm not sure about both, both the properties. I'm just taking a look at our records now. It, it does appear that both those properties to the, uh, to the west uh, across the church gate are owned by, uh, by the same uh, uh, folks who own the uh, church site. So if it remains commercial, there's no commercial use around it right now at all, even though to us looking at it and to residents, it looks like it's surrounded by commercial. One is field by the RM and the other is a school site now. I wanted to ask one question in terms of um, moving this forward and, and getting to the next stages. I'm not gonna talk about um, multifamily or, or what's going to turn up there because we don't know what they're gonna ultimately submit and ask council to rezone that for. It's hard to have those discussions, but in terms of um, what they're able to do right now with the zoning that they have, what could appear there underneath our zoning bylaw as commercial that could just appear there right now without coming to council? Yes, yeah, so uh, that's a great point. It is currently zoned and designated for commercial development. So anything that's permitted um, in the CH commercial highway zone, which is a wide range of commercial uses, would be permitted there as of right. In other words, it would not need to, to come to council. Um, so yes, uh, great point. So if we did not go through with this and move forward in terms of secondary plan changes and in terms of their intent for um, residential zoning, we could see any number of different uses pop up there without any council approval or any requirements to come to us at all? Uh, not in terms of the zoning bylaw, that's correct. And that is concerning to me. We do have a lot of brand new, beautiful homes being built there. We've got our Sonova right there. And suddenly we've got some commercial uses pop up right there um, as they're permitted to do. So I think this is an opportunity for us um, as a council to control what is going there and, and have some use that's consistent. Councillor Link, we've gone around the table again. Um, you can go ahead and then I'll ask every other council member if they would have anything else to add as well. Um, any Thanks. business that uh, moves into there, would they not be subject to having to have a development agreement? That would be a, a, a question for your administration. So there's no zoning bylaw requirement for additional approvals or council approval, but if there is a development agreement already on the property, then there may be uh, some requirement under that, but that would have to be uh, addressed by your administration. Is that possible to address? I can matter? ask our CAO without a, without a subdivision or request for rezoning, we wouldn't have any way to add a development agreement to that. Mr. CAO, is there anything that yourself or Ms. Elias would like to add to that? I can talk to that. We have a development agreement for the capitalist increase now, so we wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be coming back for another development agreement. Not an amended agreement either? Me, uh, Link? Not an amended agreement either? No. No changes possible. Okay. Clear enough. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Any other council members wanting to uh, ask Mr. Payton any further questions? Go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. Um, I guess uh, just an um, observation, and we can talk about this as, as council. Mr. Uh, McGarry does have control of who he sells the property to and would have some idea of what was going up. Uh, again, I'm just going to you know, ask Mr. McGarry or whoever comes on, 
what's the buffer from the highway? And I think that's what we have to think about. I don't have necessarily uh, any disagreements with emerging residential. My concern is the buffer from the highway. And I just feel like sometimes we're uh, sticking it to the RMF all the time. They seem to get the bad uh, locations where they're up against industrial or now they're up against the highway. So I'm just wondering what, what we can what we, we can do in that regard or what we creatively put our heads together would would uh, make that more pleasant if we did rezone it to emerging residential. I guess I would just, I'll, I'll refer to um, our planner in terms of us asking the application about rezoning, is it appropriate to have those conversations when we're not having that application at this time? Is it appropriate for us to be asking about RMF2 or residential when we're not at that stage yet? Well, it's relevant in the sense that um, council is fully within the right to, to ask what, what their plans for the property are. Um, I will say that any concerns, for example, a buffer from the highway, um, those details would be uh, would be addressed at the rezoning stage through a recommended development agreement. So, um, so now wouldn't be the time uh, necessarily to hammer out those details, uh, but I think it's appropriate to ask the question of the applicant. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Payton. All right, I will ask Ms. Elias, do we have the applicant on the line wanting to speak on this matter? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Jackie Wilkie with us this evening. She's registered in favor. It appears we've lost Miss Wilkie and might just take a, a minute for her to log back in. Okay. Welcome, Miss Wilkie. Can you hear us okay? Now I can hear you guys. I was booted out for a little bit there. Sorry, as I uh, changed from. <laughs> viewer to panelist it decided that it should go a little crazy on me there you're in now you're in. <laughs> thank you um if i can share my screen i can do my presentation oh, oh, there's a stable for jerry there i am so it's just going to take a moment here. I'm on my computer at home, which is old and cranky. There we are. So this is our uh, presentation for the secondary plan amendment to move from uh, commercial highway commercial policy area to emerging residential neighborhood policy area. Um, for the two pieces of property on the corner of Middle Church Gate and Capitalist Drive. The proposed amendment is to modify the designation on these two on this corner, these two corner lot pieces of property uh, to facilitate the potential future multifamily residential development, as has been discussed previously uh, by the planner. The lands to the north are part of phase one of Parkview Point with RMF1 and RS zoning, uh, all within the emerging residential neighborhood policy area. There is potential interest in the development for multifamily housing in this area that is not permitted under the current CH designation. The redesignation would not prohibit residential or commercial development in this area, but will open the opportunity for multifamily. As noted by council in the past, in past hearings, there is a demand for housing for seniors that is part of that is part of multifamily housing. And depending on the uh, development in the future, may be part of this as well, or may be facilitated within that. Um, as has been discussed previously, the use to the uh, east is the Sonova Center, so it's a green center, and the developer um, 
has agreed that this would be a much better fit to have as a multifamily development. Uh, multifamily, as we've discussed previously quite a while ago, is uh, considered a good um, step down from uh, as a buffer between single family and uh, other uses, in, including commercial uses and also with the highway. It is not un atypical to have multifamily housing along the highway. You can see it along the entire perimeter highway, north, south, east, and west. Um, you will see a number of multifamily as well as single family houses all the way along the perimeter highway. Uh, what that buffering is on the front will be um, to the requirements of the zoning that will be done at a later date. Um, and again, dependent on how this is rezoned and, and what's done on this property. I know that there were some questions on the rezoning. Um, we are not in a position to talk about that at this time uh, in that there are uh, a number of opportunities that are being presented right now and they are being reviewed by the land developer at the moment. So at this time, we cannot speak on that in that it is uh, under discussion with a number of parties. So after this, we will be going for a rezoning application, then uh, possibly a subdivision, possibly not, uh, the development agreement, and then construction. And then I just have a nice map of the whole East St. Paul, or West St. Paul, sorry, not East St. Paul, West St. Paul area, because it's just nice to see it. <laughs> so we're open for any questions or comments uh, from council. Thank you, Ms. Wilkie. Uh, I will go around our virtual table here and see if there are questions for you. Councillor Bassetti, any questions for Ms. Wilkie? Thanks, Ms. Wilkie, for your presentation. And it was good to hear a couple of the things you said in there. You've listened to some of the residents and also some of the councillors who brought in the, you know, the, the senior living, that kind of stuff. So it's good to see you there in your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bassetti. Councillor Link, any questions? For Ms. Wilkie? I don't know if, the, thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't know if uh, Ms. Wilkie heard my question. Um, the public hearing was adjourned a couple years, whatever ago, 20, March 12, 20, to allow further public engagement. Has there been further public engagement about the use of this property? Um, there has not been further public engagement. Uh, there was a number of things that have happened since that hearing um, that have gone on um, with this piece of property and other portions of the land that have happened uh, around it. So that um, process for doing public engagement has not happened. Um, there's been conversation with uh, industry people and potential uh, purchasers. Um, and also there's been the new development that's been happening in behind, which is sort of bringing in new uh, new residents that we would like to also uh, discuss um, what's going on behind them before they um, finish up building their houses. So those will be some of the conversations that are going to be had um, before uh, the next stage of what we're looking at. Thank you, that's, that's all that I wanted to ask. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Fiber. Hi again, Ms. Wilkie. Hello. Good to hear from you. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned seniors wanting uh, multifamily. You guys have a lot of multifamily in Parkview Point already for seniors. Uh, we don't even have enough seniors to fill some of those multifamily. So I'm going to assume at this point that we're gonna have other families coming in, maybe other seniors coming in. I have no issue with this turning residential. What I have issue and a couple of things that I would like to see addressed when you come back from zoning is, I have issue with an apartment block going up there because it's sort of the intention was RMF2. I, I wouldn't want to see an apartment block there. I would like to see something that blends in more with what's existing behind it, which is, I believe, single family housing and multifamily housing. Um, so that's my concern. And my concern is, is um, you had said, well, there's lots of RMF around the perimeter. Well, there isn't any RMF that I can see around our perimeter right now. Um, 
And when we put how we, we put commercial up front in order to sort of buffer that noise, what will you, what would you and do you have any plans to buffer that noise if you put emerging residential up? As, as I said, whatever that buffer would be, it would be a physical buffer in some way, shape or form that would be um, designed to make it work with what's uh, what would happen on that site. Uh, and again, we aren't at a position right now to discuss either RMF1 or RMF2 uh, in that we have discussions going on with other um, with potential buyers. So we cannot discuss that at this moment. It is in your application, though. No, it is not in this application. Well, I read it. <laughs> no, this application is for this is for changing from CH to emerging multifamily. Yeah, but it emerging does. for multifamily, but it doesn't say what type of multifamily. This is yeah, not the rezoning. Is. This is not a rezoning application. No, I know, but it does state in the second reading that your intention is RMF two. And I, I did clarify that earlier. I don't know if you heard that. The original one, first reading, just said multifamily. The second one said RMF two, and that's why I'm concerned about it. And and again, we we may or sure may not talks. have that right now. We may okay. or may not have that right now. But right now, it's just dealing with the emerging emerging uh, neighborhoods policy that we need to deal with right now. Because again, okay. we, there's there's just a lot of bigger conversations that are happening. <laughs> okay, so you're in the early stages here, and We're, you just there's a lot of things happening right now. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so basically what you want to do is just have it sort of blend into what's in behind it. Yeah. Just get it so that it's going so that it works with what we're doing um, with the Sonova Center, with the um, housing in behind and with what the church property will be doing on the other side. And they yeah. do own those two pieces of property on the other side. And there, we want to make sure that whole entry coming into Parkview Place is a, is a great entry. Okay, yeah. and, and we will deal with that buffering when it comes to the, or the developer will deal with that buffering when it comes to that time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Craig, any questions, comments for Ms. Wilkie? Ask Ms. Wilkie for a presentation and she is out the moment. Thank you. I cannot hear you at all, sorry. It's a good thing you didn't hear me. I'd like to thank you for your presentation. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I'd like to thank you as well, Ms. Wilkie. Always um, have a great presentation for Council and answer all of our questions. Um, as a follow up to Councillor Link's questions about public engagement held in the past, um, and just to see if I understood you correctly, you were talking about all of the homes coming in uh, and all of the activity going on in Parkview Point right now in behind. Before anything would be done on this stage going forward, would there be public engagement uh, and information shared with um, that area? Yes, that's that's the intent is to to have the um, to have the a conversation with those pe those people that are backing onto this site. They're the ones who are going to be most impacted. Then I, I want to commend you for that because that's really important to us too. So if these people have invested. Um, as you know, and as the developer knows in that area, so if they've invested, uh, if something new is coming up and it's zoned commercial right now and that designation is going to change, I commend you guys for waiting, doing your due diligence and, and being able to uh, engage those new residents in the process. So uh, I like the sounds of that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to uh, see if there's anyone registered in support, opposition or for information, and then we'll come back to you, uh, Ms. Wilkie, if there are uh, follow up comments that you'd like to make after that. Thank you. Ms. Elias, have we got anyone else registered to speak in support opposition or first? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Donna Thordarson registered in favor. She's with us this evening. Good evening, Good evening Ms. Thordarson. Welcome back. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Perfect. Yes. Um, Donna Thordarson with Waterside Development. I thank you very much for listening to our uh, thoughts and vision on this piece of property. Um, it's two lots, zoned commercial, designated commercial at this point. Um, our thought was when we're looking at the vision of the subdivision, the entrance off of Capolis, which is our main entrance right now until we have the uh, crossing across the tracks put in place. 
But right now, our main entrance is off of Capitalist Road onto Middle Church Gate. Um, with that being said, as you come off of Capitalist onto Middle Church, we have this huge parcel of land, these two um, lots zoned uh, commercial that we feel is not compatible to the subdivision itself. And we're looking at it more as um, a visual entrance to Parkview Point. Um, and with that being said, the emerging residential just makes sense with the subdivision of Parkview Point. Um, we touched on, I'm just gonna go through a couple of points here. I've got one, one of the big issues that we're having along Capitalist and why we revisited uh, the lots backing onto, um, these two lots backing onto our subdivision is the accessory, accessory buildings that have been approved along Capitalist uh, are not what we had envisioned when Capitalist was first approved. Um, we actually were never really aware that the CCANs would be approved, but they are being. And the accessory buildings that are now being approved, uh, being built on the capitalist properties, um, they become very encroaching onto our residential community, which when we first planned this, that was never the vision in place. So that's one huge reason why we want to redesignate this land. Um, the other thing is uh, the school and the compatibility to have multifamily residential. And I'm not saying high rise. I'm not saying four story. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that to have it rezoned to accommodate other than commercial. Um, or yeah. And um, so I mentioned the seat cans. I mentioned the accessory buildings. I mentioned the school and what the school is bringing to the subdivision. Uh, and having um, that component at the front entrance way to be conducive to that. Um, I guess the biggest issue is that the entrance way into Parkview Point is very important to us. Um, let's see, what else have I not touched on? Um, the CH we feel is not compatible um, and uh, one thing I do want to just touch on for a moment. So our vision is not necessarily apartment style building. And I think that that's been touched on a couple of times. Um, so that'll come up with the rezoning of the land, but rest assured that's really not what our intent is here. And um, the other, the last thing I wanted to touch on is the buffering from the highway, from the property to the highway. If you look at the trails, those lots back onto the perimeter as well. And if you go further down through West St. Paul along the perimeter, you have properties along Addis Road that back onto the perimeter. So I don't feel that this particular property is going to be um, at an advantage, uh, disadvantage of the location and where the perimeter is located. And we'll make sure that whoever's developing the land, uh, that the design will be conforming to what the RM would like to see in place. Thank you, Donna. I'm gonna go around our uh, council table and see if there are any questions for you. I think you've cleared up a lot of the questions council had and uh, we appreciate that. I'll go around and see if there's further questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions? Just, just a comment. Um, I too was bothered when I saw those accessory buildings and second buildings going up on those commercial lots. And I puzzled about it for a very long time. I asked about it, I didn't get a, an answer. And I finally discovered it in the zoning bylaw you can use as much of that property to build as if there's no maximum area. At least that was my interpretation of the zoning bylaw. So I can see why you would be upset as well. Uh, 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 and uh, concerned 
that these could um, affect the value of your properties that you intend to, to sell to builders. Just a comment, that's all. Thank you. I'm, I'm pleased to hear you talk about buffering. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Prague, any comments, questions for Ms. Thornton? I'd just like to stop that on for her presentation and you've cleared up a lot of the issues. Thanks. Councillor Kleiber? May I call you Donna? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Donna, I think we might be agreeing tonight. <laughs> It's a good thing, Dorothy. <laughs> um, no, I agree with you. Uh, I took a drive through uh, about a week ago through the development and just had a look at, see what was going up. And uh, was my husband's comment. He said, you're not putting commercial up there, are you? So I'm going to blame it on my husband. And I said, you know what, you're right. It just seemed like it would be better to be some kind of residential. So my only concerns with it was I don't, I don't want to see an apartment block there uh, if MF goes up and just some kind of buffering for the noise from the perimeter because, you know, though, even though we have some issues with, uh, you know, accessory buildings and that, they act as a buffer for noise for what's going in behind there too. So as long as, uh, you know, you keep that in mind when you come back for zoning, if we can do some kind of buffering just for that sort of section that's so close to the perimeter. I don't know how you're going to structure it, but leave it in your capable hands. Thank you, Councillor Cliver. Councillor Bersetti, any questions, comments for Donna? Just comments, I guess. Uh, first of all, thanks, Donna. You, you cleared up a lot of the questions, you know, that I think a lot of us were asking. And it, it was good to hear you say your vision, because that means you're not just, you know, in it to get this finished and out uh, you've proven yourself through some of the other developments you're you're in included in with the you know you, you put a vision in your head with aesthetics and how you want it to look as a full picture you're not just looking at piece by piece you're looking at the entirety of it so i, I completely commend you on that and i think your track record on you know the way you finished some of the other developments you were involved in um I think you give us some, you know, good feeling inside that you're going to follow through with what you're telling us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bersetti. I couldn't say it any better. I, I agree. I think it was uh, very reassuring for you to talk about the vision that you have for the entrance way. Um, a lot of um, what we try and talk about with residents is building partnerships with developers and you're helping us build communities. So when we have development agreements and there's areas that are approved, it's a full scale vision. Um, and you guys are quite literally invested in our community, um, but also quite passionate about what you're going to leave behind and what that's going to look like in the future from the pergola that's coming up to uh, the houses to the different lots for seniors that are available. And now uh, very reassuring to hear you say that you do not want to see commercial on there. Um, I'm not sure if you heard my question to the planner earlier, but um, commercial could pop up there now. It's designated um, as commercial. So I think it provides huge reassurance to um, council and definitely for residents there that that's not the intent and that you're wanting to have a beautiful entrance way. So um, very supportive of that and very happy to hear that. Excellent, thank you. All right, Ms. Elias, have we got anyone else registered in support uh, for opposition or information? Yes, Madam Mayor, we also have Bill McGarry registered in support. In opposition, we have Norma Alberg. She submitted comments stating the future of this highway commercial space is uncertain because the applicant has clearly stated an intent to seek RMF2 zoning. This level of zoning is in contravention of the development plan in that is more that in that it is more intrusive than the RMF1 zone, which would facilitate the applicant's stated intention to build townhouses in this space. Uh, no one else is registered in opposition and no one is registered for information. 
Thank you, Ms. Elias. Then I would go back to the applicant um, to have that opportunity to respond to the opposition or to um, comment on what they've heard from council. I think that um, what I'm hearing is that the apartments is a no-no. Nobody wants to see that. Apartments nor condos in a high-rise type of building. And I don't think our intent is that. I, I believe that what we are looking to strive for is more of a seniors living accommodation. Mrs. Link, that's what you had mentioned in a couple of meetings ago, or maybe the last meeting, uh, that the senior living um, is uh, very much sought after in that area. And so we're trying to find pockets within the subdivision that will accommodate that. Um, we want to make sure that how we are developing the subdivision will accommodate all of those demographics where the demand is. So that's kind of what our, our thought is behind that. Yes, Dorothy. Thank you, Donna. I'll go around the table and see if there's additional questions for you. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. So Donna, um, you know, the, um, there's a, in Birds Hill, they have sort of a seniors area there, or they used to, they can't do it anymore because of human rights, but there is a um, complex with all like duplexes and multifamily in there. And that thing sold out nonstop. Um, and then uh, I know that there's uh, one on Main Street there by River Grove that is also like a seniors area. And I know Councillor Perag's talked about it a few times, right? Councillor Perag, yeah. And uh, is that kind of what you're going for there? Um, maybe not in this particular site. I don't think that it's large enough. I know that we are looking uh, within the phases in, uh, in um, a Parkview Point. We are trying to incorporate that type of lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, we just have to have the parcel large enough to be able to accommodate it. Uh, and I think we're almost there. But this particular site, I don't know if it's going to be quite exactly like that. Uh, but we will try and accommodate something similar to it. Okay. Yeah, those are really nice areas and people are really seeking them out. So mm -hmm. I know we put, we put those 60 foot lots in there and I know that was one of the things we, you were striving for. So uh, just a suggestion. So thank you. And I, it sounded like you were saying that. Mm -hmm. Councillor Prague, any additional comments? I get to the province. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Brissetti, any follow-up comments for Donna? Thank you. And Councillor Link. No, no more comments, thank you. Thank you. Um, and no more comments from uh, questions for me. Maybe just a comment in, um, I like the sound of having things uh, for seniors um, accessible. I know there's been comments and concerns raised uh, by members of council in terms of high rise apartment. Maybe Mr. Payton, I think the highest that we can have in West St. Paul would be, is it three stories or four at 45 feet? So I wanna reassure council members and anybody listening that we couldn't possibly have a high rise here, even if that RMF was later approved in the future. Yes, to the maximum height in the RMF two zone, 45 feet, RMF one, 35 feet. So if it was an RMF2 that was applied for to have an apartment, to be accessible for seniors, to have an elevator, to have those things, the maximum it could be would be 45 feet high, which we have some houses in that are. Okay, good to clarify. Thank you. No further comments or questions from me. And with no one else um, registered, I will read the resolution to close the public hearing and can discuss as a council. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded by Councillor Kleiber. Any discussion, hearing, and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. And I will read the resolution. Second reading bylaw amendment. Be it resolved that Middle Church Secondary Plan Bylaw Amendment 2019-14 being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to redesignate the properties located at 655 and 673 Capitalist Drive from Highway Commercial Policy Area to Emerging Residential Neighborhood Policy Area be read a second time. 
Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Any discussion? Councillor Link, any further comments? Councillor Prague, Councillor Kleiber. I think all my concerns were addressed. Thank you. And Councillor Bersetti. Well, thank you. Okay. Hearing and seeing no further comments, I will request a recorded vote. And I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. And we have third reading, item 5.4.4. Be it resolved that Middle Church Secondary Plan Bylaw Amendment 2019-14 being a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul to redesignate the properties located at 655 and 673 Capitalist Drive from Highway Commercial Policy Area to Emerging Residential Neighborhood Policy Area be read a third and final time, signed, sealed, and therefore passed as a bylaw of the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul. Can I have a mover, please? Move by Councillor Bersetti, second to Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried, thank you. Those are our planning items for this evening. Mr. Payton, before I thank you, uh, I wanna let council know that I believe this is your last meeting with us as our planner and that you will be moving to the private sector. So I don't know why you would want to leave us and all the fun things that come with public hearings. Uh, but I want to thank you for the work that you've done for West St. Paul. All of your reports have been detailed and amazing and have really been informative for Council to help us make informed decisions. So I want to thank you for that. And on behalf of Council and our staff that work with you, I want to wish you nothing but the best as you move forward in your private sector career. And maybe you'll change your mind and come back on to uh, public sector and help us out because we've definitely appreciated it. And I understand that there's a couple of files that you'll be finishing up possibly um, and working with just before you leave as well. So that would be wonderful. We hope that you can do that. But we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And, uh, thank you. Uh, and yes, you may not have seen the last of me just yet. So thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to use this opportunity for council to take a 15 minute break. Have a, have a drink and come back fresh and we'll finish up the rest of the council meeting. 15 minutes. Councillor Kleiber? Can we make it like five? <laughs> Everybody okay? No, we want to. Okay. All right. Thanks. We'll make it 15. We'll be back in 15. Okay. Thanks.
All right, we are back live. Thank you everyone who's been watching for your patience. Uh, we are at item 7.1 in the agenda, confirmation of minutes, committee of the whole meeting, March 11th, 2021. Be it resolved, the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Meeting of Council held on May 11th, 2021, be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion on the Committee of the Whole Meeting? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Item 7.2, special meeting of May 13th. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on May 13th, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. 7.3, the regular meeting Sorry, we keep going here. Regular meeting of May 13th, be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on May 13th, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Councillor Link, go ahead. I'm just wondering when we're going to uh, have a special meeting to finish uh, the items discussing the items that were tabled. There were there were a number of items that were tabled. We didn't get round to, to finishing. And I understood that there was a special meeting that was going to be called. There hasn't been one yet. The plan is for early yes, next sorry. week. Sorry, the plan is for early next week. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. And finally, the special meeting of May 20th, be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of council held on May 20th, 2021 be approved. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Kleiber, seconded. Councillor Link, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. No delegations for this evening, no bylaws for consideration. We are on item 10.1, accounts. Be it resolved that the vouchers 42184 to 42230 as listed and totaling $258,100.11 and April visa payment totaling $15,714.93 be approved as presented. Can I have them over please? Moved by Councillor Brissetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Councillor Link? I wish to thank uh, through the mayor, uh, our CAO for answering some of the questions that I submitted. Um, I, I just like to follow up. Um, the um, Stantec bill for almost $4,000, we are going to be reimbursed uh, by the developers of Meadowlands. What will we be reimbursed for? The total amount of the check. I, I, I did not hear you, I'm sorry. We'll be reimbursed for what the check amount is for. Well, what it was the service that was provided? Engineering services by Stantec for the Meadowlands. Uh, what kind of engineering services did they do? Infrastructure. <clears throat> I have another follow up question. May I ask the CAO, Madam Mayor? Thank you. There was a visa payment for accurate lawn and garden. Was that for a capital expenditure or an operating expenditure? And what lawn equipment was purchased? It's an operating budget. Uh, I don't know why we're going through this on, on uh, uh, approving the check register. Uh, I had questions. However, that's a, let me finish, Councillor Link. 
uh, that's that's the operating uh, budget expenditure, and and uh, uh, they purchase uh, equipment to to cut the the grass, like uh, weed trimmers. Uh, these are there's some blowers on here, so that's the green team and uh, letting us, letting us do our jobs to go around uh, recreation centers, uh, tennis courts, etc., and make sure that they're you know we're trying to beautify. So we would most likely wouldn't have a, a small expenditure like that as a capital expenditure. Thank you very much for, for the uh, specifics that you knew right off hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Any further questions regarding the accounts? Hearing and seeing none, oh, go ahead, Councillor Kleiber. I forgot to send my questions ahead, but I just sent an email to the CEO. So if you can just reply to me in the next couple of days, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Go ahead, Councillor Link. Will we all get the questions and the replies from the CAO? I would hope. 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 Councillor Kleiber, did you copy all of Council? Councillor Link is asking if you copied us all on your questions regarding the payment. I don't remember, <laughs> but uh, certainly I can add you to the email. Hearing and seeing no further questions, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried, thank you. All right. We are down to item 15.1, 2020 annual competition for good roads. Be it resolved that the Council of the Rear Municipality of West St. Paul submit nominations for the Manitoba Good Roads Association 2021 annual competition. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Preg, seconded Councillor Bersetti. Any discussion? Maybe somebody can remind me. Councillor Kleiber, are you on this committee? Councillor Preg, has there been any update on this in the midst of COVID? We haven't had have any meetings or anything. Nothing as yet. Thank you. I wondered, and, and not all organizations are still carrying on with meetings, so I wondered. Thanks for the update. I guess we'll find out when they let us know in terms of the competition for this year. So thank you. He seeing and hearing no further questions, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Item 15.2 is a letter we received from our uh, MP, Raquel Dancho. Whereas the federal government has passed a motion to add 988 a national three digit suicide crisis hotline. And whereas the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has increased the demand for suicide prevention services by 200%. And whereas existing suicide prevention hotline require the use the user to remember a 10 digit number and go through directions or be placed on hold and whereas the 2022 whereas in 2022 the united states will have in place a national 988 crisis hotline and whereas the rm of west st paul recognizes that it is significant and important it is a significant and important initiative to ensure critical barriers are removed to those in a crisis and in a crisis and seeking help now therefore be it resolved that the rm of west st paul endorse the nine this 988 crisis line initiative and therefore be it resolved that the staff be directed to send a letter indicating such support to the local MP, MLA, Federal Minister of Health, the CRTC and local area municipalities to indicate our support. Can I have a mover please? Move by Councillor Bersetti, seconded Councillor Preg. Any discussion on this matter? We've got the attached letter for residents watching that might not have seen, uh, the initiative is to have a 988 crisis line that is a unified national number um, in, in different cities and provinces across Manitoba, that crisis line and suicide prevention line is different in different cities. So this initiative would have a unified number across Canada for suicide prevention. Hearing and seeing no further discussion on this, I will call for the question, all those in favor? 
Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. We have no in camera this evening. Um, and so I will ask for a mover to adjourn the meeting. Moved by Councillor Kleiber, seconded Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you next week for a special meeting. Oh, go ahead, Councillor Prague. Oh, he's saying goodbye. Good. We're good. <laughs>